let's talk about Memory by Lois McMaster Bujold. Uh, this is Vorkosigan's Saga Book 10. Uh, uh, chronologically, it's in a pretty similar position, actually. It's kind of 9 or 10 or something like that. The publication and the chrono chronology are, are different. Uh, slightly, it eventually evens out and, and becomes uh, continuous. This is not collected into a uh, bind-up. This is, I think, the first for Cosigan uh, review I've done of an individual book. And I, I guess I don't think it will be, partly because I'm not sure if buy-in will do anymore, but also because I think it's, it's long, it's over 400 pages, and it's very much 450, I think. Um, and it's very much a standalone. It, that sounds silly because they all are, but uh, it stands alone. It is a centerpiece novel of the whole saga. Uh, and it stands roughly in the middle in many ways as well. I think there are 16 or 17 uh, novels, for instance, and this is uh, around the middle. Uh, I thought this was great. I'll give a very short, completely non-spoiler review, and then I'll move on to spoilers for books that I have already reviewed on the channel chronologically beforehand. So in this, uh, this is a book about Mars Vorkosigan, the main protagonist of the Vorkosigan saga. There are a couple of others who lead certain books. And uh, this is set after some of it kind of picks up on events that have happened before in a book called uh, Mirror Dance. It says, oh, you know, this stuff's happened. This is important. And it sets up a, a problem where Miles, who's kind of a special ops agent who goes off leading these mercenaries in a semi-deniable ops situation for uh, uh, the Barriarian government, uh, the sci-fi government, the space government. Um, he goes off to other planets and does stuff, you know, on their behalf. He's from an aristocratic family, but he uh, he goes off undercover. And uh, this sees him back on Barry Yar. And uh, one, I think one description, and this is a really good one, and I don't think it spoils anything. It's uh, Miles hits 30, 30 hits back. That is the official uh, chronology description you get in the back. And it's uh, it's accurate. It's about the this sort of growing into adulthood um he's he'd been an adult for some time but this is really having to come to grips with the consequences of his actions and of other people's actions of seeing what's happened in the series so far coping with uh the results of various of his actions and of other people's actions his parents actions particularly uh Arol, Vorkosigan and Cordelia Naismith um about him thinking about what's going to happen next uh, and it's about how his uh, his boss um comes on uh, under some kind of attack that ends up leading to it's a parallel crisis you know he's hitting this sort of uh quarter life crisis at, you know 30 uh, and his boss is hitting really a midlife to early pensionable crisis um and these are paralleled and miles has to get involved and try to sort stuff out uh, whilst also sorting his own existential gump out and this just really works it's Bujold is a great writer she's a really nice style very easy reading style occasionally beautiful funny um, the her world building is is non uh, Her characters are are brilliant. She she is is comfortably one of the the best uh, non classic sci fi fantasy authors going. You know people have though she did start you know forty years ago or whatever. Uh, she she is uh, an absolute uh, top tier inner circle writer. Uh, grossly neglected, grossly neglected. And uh, this is this is the best for Cosgan book I've read so far. Uh, and, um, you know, really has uh, bids fair to be her magnum opus, her masterpiece. Um, you know, comparable in terms of other stuff I reviewed of hers or discussed of hers with Curse of Chalion and Paladin of Souls, comparable with Mirror Dance, Barrier, War Game, but better than all of those, I think. Uh, it's particularly powerful in the first half. Um, it takes a while to get going on some things you'd call the plot, but there is a plot, so there's no sense that, oh, well, the main plot is this. No, it doesn't matter. There is a plot. It's just there are different plots interweaving. And I never felt it was that that didn't feel slow. I talked about this with the first RCN book, what's it called With the Lightnings, uh, where I was like, it's kind of weird that it takes, you know, a couple of hundred pages for the plot to get going. In here, uh, even though technically the blurbed plot, which I won't read out because I think it, it's not super descriptive and it's kind of spoilery. Um, the blurbed plot really gets going in the second half of the book, uh, but there's or you know second two thirds. But there's so much that is going on and is central to the plot of the character, and it's a payoff of lots of things that have happened so far. So it both works as a good story in itself with good character work and a genuinely quite good plot, 
um, that maybe resolves when it resolves slightly quickly, but it not not really, not enough to ding it, uh, I think. Um, and it's all done in this very attractive, easy reading uh, style, very thoughtful, emotive. Um, it is Bujard at the height of her powers. I mean, it's it's about the right time for that as well, is it? 1996. So in a period where from ni the very early 90s through to the mid noughties, she hits a joint record, whatever it is, a Hugo nomination number. She wins three Hugos. Uh, we're talking about the most important writer in that period in uh, in the Hugos. And the Hugos are a variable currency, don't get me wrong, I certainly think so. But this is a time where I think they're recognising someone very special. And this is the highlight of that. Uh, so I recommend it. Just to add a few things for those who've watched other Volkovskian videos I've done and who have read other books. Here we basically have Mirror Dance has left Miles uh, cryo revived and basically brain damaged, you know, minorly brain damaged. And this leads to, an, uh, at the very start, an accident um, where he uh, temporarily cuts a uh, a Vor courier in half, a Barriarian courier in half. This is the very start. And this leads to a thing where he basically wants to, he's wondering, do I cover up that this has happened? How do I keep my job? Because if they find out at, in Barriar, I'll lose my job. And so this sets off this identity crisis. Meanwhile, um, it becomes apparent there's some sort of memory problem, eventually, with his boss at, at Impsec, uh, Simon Ilion, his father's closest ally uh, and his boss, um, this kind of unemotive, undemonstrative man. Um, and there's also this thing about the emperor, Gregor, his cousin um, and, and friend, uh, and indeed to a lesser degree his cousin, Ivan Vorpatril, all of them sort of in a sense, come to the point where they realise that, you know, those those guys are realising, not that childhood's over, that's the wrong way to put it, but there's a, there's a degree of moving on. There's just loads of plot development going on, loads of character development going on, and Miles gets to look back, not just at the events of Mirror Dance, but also of Mountains of Mourning, and of other things, you know, touching upon um, why he lives, why he sleeps in the room he sleeps in, in Vorkosigan House in, in Vorbar Sultana, the, the capital of Barriar. Why does he sleep in that room rather than anywhere else? How does he deal with the legacies of his, uh, the complex legacy of his grandfather, who had wanted to kill him as a genetic freak, uh, and then uh, who uh, really kind of warms up to him? How does he deal with that? Lots of different things going on. How does Barry R uh, cope with changing, uh, with, uh, we would call it liberalising? Uh, it's a really, really interesting, powerful book um, and the plot that plot that Ilyam plot to do with his memory this man with perfect memory you know due to a chip in his head um, parallels it and works well and um, it th there's it's I, I you know I said things wrap up maybe very slightly quickly um, without it being a serious issue I would I guess I'd also add that the highly poignant stuff is is the first half there's poignancy later on and um, there's some really quite you know quite uh, touching stuff, stuff that makes you think, oh wow, we've come a long way, this is 10 books in, you know, um, lots of that stuff. Uh, we see Aral and Cordelia aging, for instance, we see Miles and Ellie's relationship um, kind of develop, and there's lots of stuff throughout, but the second half certainly is about resolution and is about what happens next, not about kind of, oh well, we're just here now, we're going to sit here in the dumps. Uh, Bougeard isn't interested in that, I think, quite healthily and uh, you know, gets going with stuff. Uh, it's it's the best book I've read by Bujold. Um, some people really like a civil a civil campaign, which is two books later, uh, which I'm looking forward to. Um, that is another very highly rated one, and I guess the others would be the other Hugo winners, um, Paladin of Souls, uh, Curse of Shining, which was nominated, uh, War Game Barrier. You know that kind of group of of books I've already mentioned. Uh, but I think this I, it. It deserves its length. It does show why it's a bit longer than the other Vorkoskin books is because it's working out the impact of the book so far. I think there's some interesting thematic questions that come out of it. It reminds me, you know, how much Miles is dealing with being Barriaran, being beaten, uh, as in from Beta Colony, his mother is from Beta Colony, not beaten, um, being Admiral Naismith, being Lieutenant Vorkosigan, 
uh, being potentially the uh, the second in line to the throne after his father, if Gregor doesn't have any kids, depending on how they finally work out the line of succession. All these kinds of things where you're like, oh, actually, that's complex, you know. Um, it's not it's not easy uh, dealing with all, all the ramifications of eight or nine books and, and, short, and novellas too. And it works so well, and it's such a worthwhile, and it works well on its own merits in terms of you take these people seriously. I think it'd be hard to come to the series reading memory and care about it as much as I did. Uh, so I, I guess that's a caveat. Uh, but who's, you know, at this point with with her her star very much in in, um, uh, in occlusion, uh, occultation, sorry, um, who is buying memory on its own? No one. Uh, so yeah. If you are wondering to move on, I guess if you've read nine so far, you're going to. But yeah, definitely do. And I'd love to hear what you think about it. That's my thoughts. But if you have read it, uh, please do tell me what you thought in the comments. Till next time.